Well, I could address a lot, but I'm here today to talk about 119, which is my <laughs> amendment. Uh, and uh, I, I'm just appreciative that you all are taking the time to hear us out. Now, this amendment um, is part of my efforts over the years to try to bring parity in between renewables and fossil fuels. And a lot of people say, well, why would you want to do that? We're not going to be using uh, coal anymore. That's just not true. Uh, we have abundant coal resources in our country. We have metallurgical coal and thermal coal. Thermal coal clearly is on the downslide, but not one that we are ready to get rid of and as we move to more renewables. And how do we know that? Well, an article appeared within the last few days. One, one came out this summer and then one came out uh, October 1st. And I would submit these for the record. Electric vehicle battery factory breathes new life into coal plant and Panasonic plant will require so much power Evergy will seek rate hike in Kansas. Now, here's the situation. Without objection. And, and I'll pass that down. <laughs> I'll pass that down to the folks. And here's what happened. Panasonic Sonic is going to build a huge EV battery plant in Kansas. And to do so, they're going to need so much power that the power company there has extended the life of a coal-fired power plant that they had originally scheduled to uh, eliminate and they're going to expand it. Uh, now, eventually, they're going to move to natural gas for one of the units, but unit four is going to be expanded, and it's going to burn coal at least for four or five more years than originally anticipated because we can't move to the renewables without the baseload power to do it. And I would submit to this committee that that's not just in putting the EV batteries in, but as we move to have more and more cars that are electric vehicles, and as the public wants that in some places... And that's fine. That's part of us moving forward. We're going to need to continue to use coal. And so I would submit that as a nation, we need to continue to do a huge amount of research, and that's why I've always been for parity. And this amendment cuts some money from renewables, adds it to um, fossil, and then sends the remainder into uh, not being spent or into the reduction of spending account, whichever way you all want to do it. I thought it was going to have that language in here, but I don't see it. That being said, it's not just the United States. This is something that my colleagues often forget. There's roughly 300 million people in India who do not have a, a uh, on-call on electric power source. 300 million people, that's almost as much as the population of the United States. If you're the, if you're the leadership of India, are you going to say we're not going to use our coal, we're not going to use our abilities to provide that power? to our people while the rest of the world is able to do so? I don't think so. This is happening. The cost of groceries are beginning to go up for millions of Americans. Our federal government has confirmed several new changes that will be made to monthly benefits starting this October. SNAP payments will be increasing, but eligibility requirements will be tightened for select groups. Dearish friends, I'll be going over all of this, so please make sure that you watch until the end of this video. Also, to say thank you for being part of this community, I will be announcing several winners this coming Friday for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter the weekly giveaway, friends, please click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, friends, the greater your chances of winning the giveaways. Millions of Americans rely on the SNAP program for benefits to supplement their grocery budget to afford nutritious foods. As of October 1st, the program received a much-needed boost to help meet the increased cost of living and inflation. The program is overseen by the USDA Food and Nutrition Service in accordance with the Food and Nutrition Act of 2008. It has adjusted the maximum allotments starting this month for the year ahead. Based on the Consumer Price Index from the Bureau of Labor Statistics for June 2022, work eligibility requirements for the program were set to become more stricter after President Biden signed the Fiscal Responsibility Act in June. One group specifically, which is able-bodied adults without dependents,
between the ages of 51 to 52 years old will now need to prove they are actively working, training, or in school in order to qualify for SNAP benefits. Work requirements expanded up to age 52 starting this month. Requirements will expand to age 54 starting in October 2024. Also starting this month, SNAP benefits are increased by 12.5% compared to last year, as reported by Forbes Advisor. According to the updates, maximum allotments have increased at various increments for the 48 states and the District of Columbia, Alaska, Guam, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. A family of four in the continental U.S. and Washington, D.C., will now be allowed a maximum of $973. Maximum allotments for a family of four in Alaska ranges from $1,248 to almost $2,000. The only location with a decreased maximum allotment is in the state of Hawaii, where a family of four will now see a maximum payment of $1,759. Additionally, the shelter cap value has increased to $672 for the 48 states. Individuals looking to qualify for SNAP benefits must apply in the state in which they currently live and must meet certain requirements, including resource and income limits. Americans opened their wallets to spend a record amount on food last year, even when inflation was considered partly because Americans like the convenience of takeout and restaurant food. Food away from home grew by an inflation-adjusted 11% last year, at the same time inflation was driving up prices. Since the year 2004, with the exception of the crisis year of 2020, Americans have spent more on food away from home annually than for food at home. So adjusted for inflation, annual U.S. spending on food increased 70% from 1997 to 2022. Congress defied the odds and approved a measure in the 11th hour to avert the first U.S. federal government shutdown in more than four years, ensuring that hundreds of thousands of federal workers keep getting paid and Americans can continue to keep government services that are crucial to their personal finances. Thanks to a stopgap measure, lawmakers bought themselves 45 additional days to keep negotiating. They now have until November 17, 2023, to pass the 12 annual budget appropriation bills that fund non-mandatory federal operations. If they do not, and the clock runs out. Federal agencies may be forced to temporarily shutter until the impasse is resolved. Ultimately, it was a bill that originated in the House of Representatives on Saturday morning that helped the government strike a deal to remain open. It was a sudden and surprising turnabout. Days before a shutdown was set to begin, the Senate passed a short-term resolution of its own. It was a measure that experts said faced an uphill battle in the Republican-controlled House of Representatives. Some members of the California Republicans' Party feel the chief representative appealed to Democrats in his last-minute bid to keep the government open. The stopgap measure passed Congress by a supermajority of 335 to 91. So the time running out, reminds Americans of another impasse over the summer when our federal government risked defaulting on its debt. It was an unprecedented event that could have cascaded into a severe financial crisis and a recession. However, shutdowns can still cause uncertainty and great pain, especially for those who feel the direct impact. Well, my magnificent and most marvelous friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for today. Thank you, dearest friends, for being part of this community. And to say thank you, 
I will be announcing several winners every Friday for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter these weekly giveaway friends, please click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, dear friends, the greater your chances of winning these giveaways. Thank you and have a wonderful and very blessed day.